Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be crafting from our stash and creating a look for less using Dollar Tree supplies and other supplies a dollar or less. Now I have chosen two home decor items from Wayfair and I will be recreating these adding my own special touches. Now I'll also be using some of those pesky little toilet paper and paper towel rolls I know we all have accumulated from being stuck at home, so break those out for this project. For your convenience, I've provided the list of supplies and tools used to make these in the description box below. Now I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hello and welcome back to my amazing subscribers to my channel. Now if you're a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into these projects. Now the first project will be a two-piece textured glass candle holder set. Now here is my inspiration photo from Wayfair. Now I really love the textured glass in these along with the gold accent petal design at the bottom. Now this retails for $86 on their website, but I thought this would be a great project to make. So let's dive into that supply list. You'll need two glass cylinder vases from the Dollar Tree some gloss Mod Podge, and we'll only need one for this project, some empty toilet paper or paper towel rolls, a strip of black poster or foam craft sheet that's cut about a half inch wide, and some brilliant gold spray paint by Krylon. Now the first thing we wanna do is to grab your two glass faces and we wanna clean them thoroughly with alcohol. Then go ahead and protect your work surface and grab your bottle of Mod Podge. Now we won't need a brush since we'll be using our fingers for this project. We wanna go ahead and squeeze a generous amount of that Mod Podge onto the vase and spread it around with your finger. And then once it's spread around, you want to just tap your finger in that Mod Podge creating a textured surface. Now once we complete this section, we want to do a new section, apply another amount, and then keep tapping until the entire vase is completely covered. And then you want to grab your second vase and you want to repeat the process. And then you just want to sit these to the side to dry. And now we can grab our toilet paper and paper towel holders. Now I'm going to be using my paper towel roll and I want to press it in half, forming a crease on both sides. And here I'm using the handle of my scissors to make a more defined crease. And now we can start cutting our pieces. Now I'm going to cut pieces about a quarter of an inch wide. And so now I'm gonna take these outside and give them a generous coat of this Carlon Brilliant Gold Spray Paint. So now our vases are about 95% dry and here you can see the texture that was formed by the Mod Podge. I think they turned out pretty good. And now our petal pieces are dry. Now we also painted that half inch foam strip as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our vase and we wanna wrap that gold strip around the bottom and cut it just a tad longer than the actual fit. And then I'm gonna take some hot glue and I wanna start to apply that strip around the bottom of the vase. And once that's all in place, you're just gonna go ahead and repeat this for the second vase. And here they both are with the strip. So now we can go ahead and start applying our petals. Now on the original design, they had two different size petals. So I'm gonna take about eight of these petals and I wanna cut them down to make them smaller.
And now we have all our petals ready to apply to our vases. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my vase and I'm going to determine the placement of the petal. And then I'm going to apply hot glue to that bottom half of the petal and I'm going to press it in place and hold it until that glue just grabs on. And then I'm just going to continue to add more petals all the way around, just applying the petals in a random pattern. And here's the complete bottom row of petals. So now I'm going to take those four smaller petals and I'm just going to apply them in the blank areas above that first row. And then I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this for that second vase. And now both bases are completed. And here is that completed project. Okay, we added a candle and this totally completes the look. Now I'm so happy the way the glass turned out and I love how those gold petals tie it all together. Now these retail for $86 on Wayfair and I spent about $5 to create the pair. Can you believe that? What a deal for some toilet paper rolls, right? <laughs> Now project number two is a hanging wood panel enamel pot holder. Now here's my inspiration photo from Wayfair. Now this piece caught my eye with that rustic enamel look of the planters and that rich wood slat background that complements it. Now I am really excited to share this one because it retails $116. So we'll need four three count packs of these five gallon paint sticks from Lowe's, 98 cents. One pack of these two pack plastic bowls from Dollar Tree. We'll need some wood stain of your choice. We'll need some wood glue from the Dollar Tree. We'll need a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. And we'll need one metal hanger or you can use paper clips. So first thing we wanna do is remove our paint sticks from all of the packaging. Now, once they're all removed, we'll set those to the side. What we wanna do is grab some plastic to protect our work surface. Then you wanna go ahead and grab your stain, some gloves, and a small rag. Go ahead and place your gloves on and make sure your stain is mixed well. Now, our sticks are printed on one side, so make sure that you stain on the blank side of your stick. Now to apply your stain, we want to apply it to the entire front side, the side of your stick. Now this color is called Jacobine and it's a very rich brown color that I absolutely love. And you could also use diluted acrylic paint as well if you don't have stain. So now that I've stained all my sticks, I'm gonna sit them outside on this nice sunny day to dry. So while those dry, I'm gonna start working on my bowls. So I'm gonna first remove all of the labeling from those bowls. Now we need to cut these in half. So to find the center of the bowl, I'm gonna take a scrap sheet of paper and press it into the center of the bottom of the bowl so the circle shape is transferred. And then I'm gonna cut out that circle. Now once it's cut out, what I wanna do is take that circle and fold it in half, and this line down the middle will be the center. So I'm just gonna place that center, that, that circle right back in the center there, and I'm gonna mark the center of the bowl where that line is with a marker. And then I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm gonna draw a line connecting the two dots that I made. And now I'm gonna take a piece of painter's tape and I'm gonna place it right along that line. 
and when it's placed along that line, the sides should fall into place, dividing the bowl completely in half. Now, if you want to double check to make sure it's center, you can run a tape measure around and measure each side between the tape. In this case, it should measure about 13 and a quarter inches on each side. Now to cut these, I will be using a hot knife. Now you certainly can use an X-Acto knife, a utility knife, a hacksaw, but I like the quickness and smooth cut of a hot knife. Now these are handy and fairly inexpensive and I have linked one in the description box for your convenience. So what we're doing is following that tape line and cutting the bowls apart. And now we have two even halves. So now I'm going to grab that second bowl and using one of those first halves, I'm going to use it as a template to mark a cutting line. And then we're just going to cut that in half. Now once everything is cut, remove all of your tape and then we can sand down any uneven edges that you may have. And next we're going to grab that foam board sheet and we're going to uh, glue down our foam, uh, our bowl halves onto the foam board. So we want to take one of the bowls and apply a line of hot glue along that cut edge and we want to press it down in place on that foam board. Now once all the bowls are glued into place, apply another bead of glue along the inside seam of each bowl. And while those are gluing, go ahead and take the ruler and draw a line across the opening of each bowl as well. This will be the back side of each bowl. Then grab your cutting mat and we want to cut apart each bowl from the foam sheet with that X-Acto knife. And then you want to take your X-Acto knife and trim the foam board off along the outside edge of that bowl. Now I've also cut down the back side, but I'll show you a close up. So what we're going to do is take our X-Acto knife and we're just going to go right along that line that we drew and cut off the back side for a nice and even cut. And now that the bowls are all cut, we're going to add that final third layer of hot glue along the inside seam for a super secure fit. So now we're about to distress and we're going to be using this uh, acrylic paint in the color pavement gray. Now we want to start by adding the color along the front edge of each bulb. And once we've finished all the bowl's edges, we're going to grab a paper towel, we're going to crumple it up and we're going to dab it into the paint. And I'm going to apply random um, distress marks to the bowl. And then I'm going to add the color to the back side of the bowl and the back edge for a little bit of added distressing as well. Now once everything dries, we want to add some Mod Podge to the areas that we painted to avoid any rubbing off. So we're going to put some Mod Podge on those parts and then let it sit to dry. Now our paint stick should be dry now, so after drying, trying a few different spacing ideas, I decided to space the eight of the sticks out about three quarters inches apart. Now three of the sticks will support the back, but they'll be a bit long for this spacing scenario, so I'll have to cut off the excess with a jigsaw. So I did cut those off, and there's a raw edge. We'll touch that up with stain later. And then I'm just going to apply some glue dots down the side and then place that stick into place about three quarters of an inch away from the edge.
And then I'm gonna place a few heavy items on top until this is set. And I'm gonna repeat this for the center stick and the other side as well. Now while that dries, we're gonna go ahead and take our hanger and we're gonna make hooks for the pots. Now you can also use heavy duty uh, paper clips if you like, if you don't have a wire hanger laying around. So the first thing you wanna do is to cut off that hanger portion and then using our pliers, we're going to straighten out our hanger the best that we can. And then I'm gonna take some needle nose pliers and I'm gonna bend down the end a half an inch and then I'm gonna bend it in again another half an inch to make a little hook. And then I'm gonna take the bowl, estimate the length and I'm going to cut that hook just a little bit longer than the back of the bowl and then clip that off. Now I'm gonna use that hook as a template and I'm gonna cut seven more pieces that exact length. And then I'm just gonna bend those into hooks on the end as well. And I'll have four sets for all four bowls. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape two of the hooks on the back of each bowl and I'm gonna secure them with painter's tape to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna repeat this with the remaining bowls. And now we're gonna apply hot glue in the area in between that painter's tape, making sure those hooks are straight and even when you do so. Now once that glue dries, go ahead and remove that tape. And once you do remove that tape, go ahead and apply hot glue to those areas where the tape was as well. Now once that glue is finally dry, we can snip off that extra length of that hanger wire on the bottom. Now this last step is for cosmetics purposes, but I'm adding a strip of this Gorilla duct tape to cover up that glue for a nice clean look. And repeat this for all the bowls. So now we take our completely dried wood rack and now we can hang our pots and hooks however we like. And each hook should comfortably fit over the slat wherever you might want to place it. Looks good. And here is the completed project, you guys. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love how this turned out. Now I've added some greenery and some flowers as finishing touches and it totally brings the look all together. Now I really love this farmhouse rustic vibe of the bowls paired with the wood. And I know I created this $116 piece for $10. Now that just blows me away. Listen, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She So Craft DEE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time.